Hello, everyone, and welcome to Wake Up With Consciousness Cafe as part of Wisdom Wednesdays, sponsored by Soul Call Ministries. And I'm Reverend Christy Hardwick, and I'm here today with Simran. And uh, Simran, I want to say your last name correctly, Singh. Is that correct? Okay, Simran Singh. I meant to ask you that before I came on, but I didn't, so I'm glad I got that right. And I feel like because of who you are, I want to say Dr. Reverend uh, <laughs> God is something Simran Singh, but uh, you go by your name. I'm so happy you're here. We've had an opportunity to be together before, and I've learned so much from you with your books and your radio show and your newsletter and your magazine and, and, and just appreciate you and who you're being on the planet. So welcome. And we want to say hello to you and talk a little bit about this is Soul Call. You've had an incredible Soul Call. So maybe we could just start with that. What has called your soul? Mm, well, first of all, it's a delight to be with you, Christy. It is absolutely a delight. And um, I would love to just be called human um, because I think that's actually a pretty rare designation. We all think that we are human, being human. Uh, but if we look at our world today, uh, it looks less than human in a lot of ways. It looks very animal and very shadow. And my soul call has been purely to experience and feel deeply and be willing to hold and face and feel everything that goes on in the world. That is my sacred activism, to be willing to be the neutral observer and see from all points of view in the same way that the divine does, because we are each eyes and windows for the divine to look through. And so the reactive self will judge and fight everything that it sees that does not agree with its filter and perspective. But the divine is simply experiencing many points of view of a full spectrum of emotionality, causality, and color, light, and form that we are. And so the greatest gift that I can give the world and my own humanity, along with uh, the great source of divinity that created us, is to be as present as possible to everything that occurs and to hold it with the sacredness that it is. Mm, beautiful. And to be present with what is. I'm thinking about one of the callings you had was to travel the country. I think it was in maybe even a, a mobile home or something. Um, 66 cities, is that, do I have that right? Yes, yes, it was a calling to live beyond who I was to integrate and immerse in what I had been talking about for so long and to also really discover the creative capacity within me because we are each the divine walking. And so we have an infinite capacity within us to experience and express. And my conscious mind knew who I was based on where I came from and how others saw me. But if I am actually a walking representation of the divine as are you and anyone watching this, then there was a whole array of expressions and talents and gifts and experiences that were still available to me. And it became a really incredible experience that confirmed so much of what I had been speaking about, but also let me see that there's a well within all of us that can come out when we allow that free flow. Uh, and that gift was such an act of love to myself. It was such an expression of light coming through me that it also gave me the gift of experiencing the balance of equivalent darkness. And my initial mission was to go out in the world and be able to see the divine in everything and everyone. And we wanna make up that that light looks a certain way, that the divine appears in a certain way, and, and that certain things are not that. And this gave me the full realization that the divine is in everything from light to dark. And that true light is actually in the deepest of darkness. Mm, mm, beautiful. And so there was, 
you know, uh, it wasn't logic necessarily. There was some, you know, on the human side of things, we might say there was some risk in, you had some plans and some ideas about where you would stop and where you would speak and those kind of things, but you really had- Oh, there was no logic whatsoever. <laughs> there was trust, no plan. <laughs> there was no plan. Yeah. No, this was flying by the seat of my pants and saying, okay, life, what have you got to show me? And okay, universe, if I truly were to just trust life and trust the universe, will it truly lead me? Will it give me every sign, symbol, and synchronicity? Will it speak to me? Will it take me to the places that I need to go? Um, can I get rid of this egoic thought that I actually could plan anything, that I have any sort of control whatsoever? What if I actually let go of the wheel and let you take it? Mm -hmm. Rather than saying, hey, I got this. I'll drive for a while. You just go according to my plan, which is what so many of us do. And mm -hmm. so this was really an adventure of the unknown. And I remember you saying that there were sometimes you would show up someplace where you may, might have called ahead or something to try to arrange something when you had the intuition that this is the place to stop. And sometimes it would be two people, but sometimes it would be a hundred and you didn't know. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. It, it was always interesting and I did it without any agenda. Uh, I realized that it, it wasn't about the things that the ego wanted. This truly was about the soul wanting to experience and that I wanted to create and perform and express regardless of whether there was one person in the room or 500, because that in the moment was the way to love me, to accept me, to mm -hmm. honor mm -hmm. every piece and part of me from the most insecure to the, the incompetent, to the one who had not practiced, to the one that was willing to be wild and untamed and bold and beautiful. And that kind of compassion is what we are here to give ourselves, to learn how to give ourselves. Because when we can have that level of compassionate acceptance for ourselves, then we are able to have that for any person in the world that we meet. And that's what's going to engender us to a new beautiful experience of the planet. Mm -hmm. That freedom that you expressed in yourself. And what I love about this concept in the soul call is that at that time, you had this calling to say, okay, go out there, go in the world, give of you and what you have. And like you said, you didn't have a locked in plan. You didn't have like the credentials for everything. It wasn't like you're you know, a renowned singer who has a CD, 10 CDs out and you're just gonna go run your tour or a speaker who, you know, has been booked ahead by an agent 15 times. You know, it was more like I, Simran, am going out into the world with my, my soul is calling me to find out who this is and what this has to express in the world. So I'm yes. just going to go and do that. And, yes. and I had never saw people some. think you were a little bit like, did anybody think you were a little bit like crazy? <laughs> uh, my family did. <laughs> my family, probably people around me, friends, uh, because I, I didn't know how to sing. I'd never sung before. Um, I didn't particularly like speaking. It was not something I wanted to do. And I was really bad at remembering or memorizing things. So I didn't want to go up and rehearse. I just wanted to get on a stage and see what would come out and see that if we do really have everything within us, if we do really know everything, then why wouldn't it show up in the moment if we were truly present? It truly was an inquiry into all of the new thought principles, all of the spiritual principles, all of the concepts of just being a human that is uh, an embodiment of the divine and saying, if that really is true, I want to integrate and understand it. And I want to do it in a way that I really feel. I, I think that was probably the, the greatest part of the calling because I did not always really feel everything or I would have delayed feeling. And that might have come from childhood. Who knows where all of our things come from? Often they are in childhood. But feeling is a big part of being human. And it's a huge part in accessing our humanity. And that was what was most important to me, was to be able to feel every emotion and every expression. And any of the expressions and feelings that you had, were some of them on the spectrum of any kind of fear, anxiety, or worry? How did you feel during this process? I imagine there was some exhilaration and other, the, the feelings we prefer, but any of the non-preferred feelings? I, I discovered very early on that fear was simply another version of excitement. 
Mm. And that I was going to allow fear to mean feeling excited about reality rather than many of the uh, other definition acronyms that we are given for it. Uh, it was an opportunity to, to decondition a bit, to step out of anything that I had previously believed and allow a different perspective. And sometimes that does happen when, when you allow either an invention or adventure or a different geographic location or a different set of friends or an experience. It gets you outside of yourself. And in that moment in my life, I needed to get outside of the experience that I had lived for 40 years to understand that there's not just this identity, but that there could be many identities. And if there could be many identities, then these were simply dresses or coats that I was putting on. It wasn't really me. And then that led to the next part of the journey, which was saying, okay, if I took off all of the clothing, all of the identities, what's left? Mm -hmm. And that meant that there would be nothing left and that would be everything because that means I'm all of it. And, and that's another part of oneness, which is a big mission of mine as well, is to truly understand and catalyze oneness. Well, you have done so much work in that area. So you've written books on the subject and books have been written through you, I would say. And you, you've painted art and you, as I said, you share on radio with other people who are sharing their thoughts and wisdom and the magazine, the 1111. One of the things I wanted to um, just mention, you just had just a few minutes together, but a lot of the things that you've done have been based on intuition and signs. And you talk to people like me and others who are in your life, you know, about paying attention. And so some of the things that have arrived in your life and some of the things that you've picked up on and picked up the thread and, and done have been by intuition and signs. Is that right? First and foremost, I learned that everything is a reflection of me. Every single person, place, thing, experience is me speaking back to me about me. And that is the same for everyone else. And if I simply paid attention to what was in front of me, that that language would guide me. Uh, and initially, that was part of what I was wanting to experience as the interconnectedness with everything else. What came from that was the creation of the magazine and the radio show and the books and the painting and the Rebel Road Tour, because I was here to create beauty in the world as well. I wanted to see what could come from me. And I needed to do that in order to heal, uh, in order to, to grow in the ways that I needed to grow. And so it all related in some way, but it did start with the conversations with the universe, which rapidly catalyzed my own spiritual growth and in which I tell people if they simply follow that one simple technique of asking, where is that in me with everything that they see, especially the things that trigger and upset them, Mm -hmm. that there's huge growth there, not just for themselves, but then they act as a conduit for the rest of the world in transmuting energies that are keeping us stuck or keeping us in the past. Beautiful. And we're certainly in a time where looking at ourselves, there's a lot of work to do that's actual practical work and work that has to be done in society, but it has to begin with, where is that in me? Um, yeah. All we're dealing with right now, and you certainly showed me um, when I was in the South with you in, in Charleston and have since um, brought myself back to the South to face some of the things that I was afraid of and to process some of the feelings I had because they now have prepared me for being able to be present with the tension and dealing with the disease of racism in our country in a way that I might not have been able to before. So I thank you for the beginning of that conversation that helped me to see what I needed to heal in me so I could be present to help others find the healing in themselves and then have the capacity to do the work that we need to do in the world. Yes, when Gandhi said, be the change in the world that you wish to see, I think the ego takes that and means that we need to go outside and do something, that we need to be active, proactive, we need to protest, we need to march, we need to do this, we need to do that and the other. And there's nothing wrong with that that can be a beautiful expression, especially if it is an inspired expression and not just part of a crowd following to do something. I believe that what he meant from that was to be the change. Can you do the work inside? Can you find what it is within you first to come, to clear, 
to, to, to be love on the planet because that ripple lasts for generations down the line. That's not just a one-time event or cause. That is an ongoing change and an embodiment that ripples out to collectives of people. And so I, I wish for everyone to realize that before you run out, go in. Yes. And then you'll know the right actions to take. Beautiful. Thank you so much. You are a light in this world. And I am so, so pleased to know you and to have you here. Thank and likewise, it is a delight to be with you. And I'm, I'm just love watching you continue to shine. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.